Hi everybody and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. It has been a few days since the Taliban took over Afghanistan. They made an announcement during a press conference in which they said that they will protect the rights of women. And of course, some people fell for that because they didn't understand what was actually being said. What the Taliban spokesperson said was that the rights of women will be guaranteed within the limits of Islam. We are guaranteeing all their rights within the limits of Islam. They have also said that they will give women the possibilities to work and to study with their hijab as long as they abide by Islamic laws and cultural values. What all of that means is not that the Taliban will respect women's rights and that women will be empowered and all that. What it means is that women will virtually have no rights, no right to make decisions for themselves. Groups like the Taliban and Islamic apologists around the world generally make the claim that they care about women, that they really value women and that their rules and their values are better for women. Let's make something very clear. Giving people rights, guaranteeing their rights, fully giving them rights, means giving the rights to them. If you want to give women rights, that would look like giving women the ability to make decisions for themselves, to decide over their own freedoms, over their own lives, over their own choices and their own movements. Letting women do what they themselves want for themselves, allowing them to be treated as they want to be treated. And what that means is not that you impose certain rules on women and you force them to accept those rules and then you say, well, they like those rules. They are happy with that. That's not what that is. That means enslaving humans, in this case, half the population. What it means to guarantee the rights of women, to give women rights, is to remove the power, the authority of men, of the state, over what women specifically can and cannot do. To give the authority, the basic human rights, to the humans themselves. The Taliban has a long, notorious history of not respecting these things. When they ruled in the past, they committed grave violations against many people, against their own population, against minorities and others, and especially against women. They denied women the right to pursue an education, to work. They commanded that all women should dress like walking prisons. They made it a rule that women can't go outside by themselves, that they cannot travel by themselves, that they cannot leave the house without the husband's permission or the male authority's permission. They made it illegal for women to speak loudly in public, to laugh in public, to wear shoes that make noises and that attract the attention of men. The logic here is that if women attract attention to themselves, then that infringes on the rights of men who want to stay pure, who don't want to be distracted by the corruption of the sexuality of women. They made it illegal for women to smell nice in public, to have nail polish in public, they cut off fingertips, they forced underage girls into marriages and severely punished those who reject or those who flee. Today they say that they have changed, they want to be a little bit different, and they want to respect the rights of women. And as it seems right now, they want to allow women to pursue an education and to go to work. But of course there is a catch. Everything will happen within the limits of Islam, their understanding, their strict adherence to Islam and its fundamentals, and as long as they abide by cultural values. Now what are a woman's rights within the limits of Islam? According to the Quran and according to the Hadiths, reports about Muhammad and his companions, Muslim women must veil themselves in public. The Taliban adopts this and will adopt this as an obligation. According to the Quran and the Hadith, women should stay at home. The Taliban adopts this as an obligation and will probably shape this within the next weeks. According to the Quran and the Hadith, women must completely obey their husbands or their male authorities. The Taliban has always abided by this, they have always considered this compulsory, they still do, and they will do so in the future. So if a woman wants to work, and the father or the husband says, no, you are not allowed to work, you will stay at home, then the Taliban will not bring them before court and say, hey, let the woman do whatever she wants, we respect women's rights. No, what the Taliban will do is to say, the law is that a woman must obey her husband. And if the husband or the guardian doesn't want this woman to work, then she will not work. That's it. Problem solved. According to the Quran and the Hadith, a man has the authority to beat his wife if the wife is not obedient enough. 
Most of the Muslim population in Afghanistan agrees with this, and the Taliban will also agree with this, as they have before. Now here is something that I want to be very fair about. According to Islam, women, female descendants, should have a specific share, a lesser share, in inheritance. The Taliban, according to their cultural values, has not respected this in the past and has ruled that this can be overruled, not giving women any share in inheritance and making them devoid of such a right. I'm not sure if they will stick to this big violation in the future. According to the Quran and to the Hadith, women cannot attract attention in public, have to hide their beauty in public, cannot be allowed, cannot attract attention with their feet or otherwise in public. The Taliban has considered this compulsory in the past in a very brutal way, and they will probably stick to that in the future as well, because this is within the limits of Islam. According to the Hadith, women cannot rule. They cannot become rulers. They cannot lead. They can only lead women. The Taliban has considered this obligatory in the past and they will stick to that. I cannot imagine that that will change. According to the Quran and the Hadith, there is no age of marriage that one has to reach in order to get married. A girl can be married at a very young age. Muhammad married his wife Aisha at the age of six and completed the marriage to her when she was nine. The Taliban has respected and enforced this in the past and will probably do so in the future. The list goes on like this forever. The man is an authority over the woman and the woman must obey the man. Men are their caretakers. So when Islamic authorities and Islamic voices say we will protect women and we will protect their rights, what they mean is not we will respect them as equal human beings. What they mean is we will take care of our lesser beings, women. It's kind of like when you say, I will respect the rights of my pet. I will take care of my dog. So in short, women's rights will not be respected, will not be expanded. Women will not be empowered. I don't know what some people who fall for this are thinking. Anyone who knows a little bit about any of this stuff knows that there will be no women's rights in Afghanistan. And those Muslim apologists in the West who now praise the Taliban and who would have probably done the same if ISIS had been successful are not people who care about women and who value human rights. They care about Islam and they should not talk to us about women. And even those women who are indoctrinated by this authoritarian system and who are apologists for it should agree to fully let women of all backgrounds decide for themselves what kind of life, what kind of choices, what kind of paths they want to pursue instead of imposing Islam on them and rationalizing that and making them accept that and then arguing that this is what women want they are okay with that you know there were slaves who agreed with slavery and slaves who said hey I'm good my master is taking care of me that doesn't mean that the slave has proper rights and that this is what they want this means that this is what you fed them what you made them accept this is what you brainwash them into let the slave free. Let the slave decide for himself what he really wants. Let them take matters into their own hands. Free them from their roles as servants, as lesser beings, and then see what all the slaves around the world will do with that. Similarly, give women their rights. Give women their right to choose for themselves what they want, no matter what they want, without imposing your rules on them, which you argue are better for them and for society in general, and then see what women will do with that. There are no women's rights within the Taliban, there are no women's rights within Islamic fundamentalism, there are no women's rights within Islam. That is the truth. I will be back. Have a good day and stay away from Islam.